1985, this photograph was taken inside a Japanese 747. It was found in the wreckage of Flight 123. Japan Airlines Flight 123 to this day is the single deadliest aviation incident involving a single plane, killing over 500 people. This is an event where the crew lost total control of their plane and could barely fly it. Some saying it was even a miracle that they kept it afloat for as long as they did. Heading into the 1970s, the Boeing 747 began taking to the skies for the first time. At the time, it was the largest passenger plane ever built for regular service, and became an icon around the world for its distinctive exterior and interior design. Initially commissioned by Pan Am to Boeing for the busy transatlantic routes, the 747 quickly became popular with other airlines. Japan Airlines was no exception. Japan's economy was exploding during this time, which helped usher in a technological boom in the country, which also had a knock-on effect on the country's aviation market, allowing more people to travel. The first iteration of the 747, the 100 model, featured a standard layout of a mix of economy, business and first-class seating options, but Japan Airlines had other plans for their planes. They approached Boeing with a request for a high-capacity option featuring an all-economy seating arrangement to be used specifically on shorter and domestic routes. Air travel had become so popular in the country that large planes like the 747 were deemed necessary on flights shorter than one hour. To help with the issue of weight, the fuel capacity was drastically lowered to compensate. This plane, the Boeing 747-100SR, could seat up to 550 passengers with this configuration. JAL operated 10 of these planes. In 1978, one of these special requirement planes suffered a tail strike. A tail strike occurs when the nose of the plane is pitching at too high of an angle on landing during the flare phase of the approach process. The angle of attack means that the tail structure scrapes the runway, resulting, most of the time, in minor structural damage. A Boeing repair team was swiftly sent to repair the damage on the plane's hull. The official investigation into Flight 123 concluded that the repair team did not appropriately repair the damage caused by the tail strike. The repair, according to Boeing standards, should include a single continuous splice plate to reinforce the damaged bulkhead with several rows of rivets to hold it in place. What was actually done was the repair crew had used two splice plates and arranged them parallel to the damage. The work that had been done did not only not conform to Boeing standard procedures, but also did not strengthen the bulkhead anywhere near as much as it should have done, allowing the weakness to succumb to metal fatigue over time. Aircraft go through cycles of pressurization during flight. As a plane climbs, the skin of the plane expands, stretching, and as the plane descends, it contracts. Over hundreds and numerous repetitions of the cycle, the metal that makes up the plane's skin can begin to fatigue, creating numerous tiny cracks. With the right care, this damage can be fixed and parts can be replaced. The tail strike that occurred on this plane damaged the aft pressure bulkhead, which helps seal the air inside the cabin. Over time, with every cycle of pressurization, this structure began to weaken. Seven years later, on August 12, 1985, the same 747 had been spending the day flying around Japan, arriving back into Tokyo after a journey from Sapporo at around 10 to 5 in the evening. The plane then spent the next hour disembarking and welcoming new passengers, cargo and fuel for their next trip that evening to Osaka, just an hour or so of flight times away. Today is Monday, and the country has just seen a public holiday. It is also the time of the Buddhist Obon festival, which celebrates family unity. And as such, part of the festivities include people returning home. The airports across Japan are very crowded, and the planes are taken off packed with passengers. At just after 6pm, Japan Airlines Flight 123 pushes back from the gate and heads up for departure on runway 15 left. There are three members of the flight crew this evening. Masami Takahama is a senior captain at Japan Airlines and is serving as a training instructor for the first officer on board, Yutaka Sasaki, who is on his way to becoming a captain himself. In the flight engineer's position is Hiroshi Fukuda. The plane climbs out of Tokyo, heading south before turning right westbound for Osaka. Their assigned cruising altitude today is only 24,000 feet for this journey. Twelve minutes after takeoff, the wound to the plane's tail section that it suffered seven years ago finally gives way in an explosive decompression. 
This is where a higher pressurized interior in a low air pressure environment, such as an aircraft at high altitude, explodes due to the high pressure air quickly escaping into the region with low air pressure. The decompression on flight 123 was with so much force that it blew off the tail fin and ripped open the fuselage at the rear galley in the cabin. This photograph was taken of the plane from the ground, which shows the plane flying without its tail fin. The tail fin itself would be located in Sagami Bay after the incident. The Boeing 747 uses a series of hydraulic powered control surfaces which all run through the tail fin. Without the plane's tail, the plane loses all power to its control surfaces from the cockpit. The crew notice quickly that something is deeply wrong with the plane, noticing that it has stopped responding to inputs from the pilots. The crew promptly check for the source of the explosion, suspecting the landing gear. First Officer Suzaki switches the transponder to 7700, the universal aviation identification for an emergency, while Captain Takahama radios air traffic control. Uh, okay, it's been, uh, one, two, three, uh, we just have, uh, we just, uh, uh, we just, 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 uh, Flight engineer Hiroshi Fukuda relays information to Captain Takahama that all hydraulic systems have gone dead. Knowing that there has been an explosive decompression, it has become imperative that the crew somehow get their plane to a lower altitude. Beyond 10,000 feet, most people will find breathing the outside air to be incredibly difficult. The onboard passenger oxygen masks only store a limited amount of oxygen for enough time for the flight crew to lower the plane enough so the passengers can breathe. As the loss of hydraulic power has left the plane almost uncontrollable, the plane begins to naturally dive, pick up speed before it increases in lift, bringing the nose back up again, putting the plane into a climb, plunging up and down several hundreds, sometimes thousands of feet at a time. Air traffic control noticed the plane's erratic flying on radar, for several minutes after the incident began, the plane has not been able to reliably descend to a lower altitude. To really drive home just how hopeless the situation on board this plane is, the crew of Flight 123 have lost their tail fin, all flight controls are dead and unresponsive, the passengers will soon be struggling to breathe, and the crew are now battling hypoxia. The only way the crew can manipulate the control of their plane is by using the throttle controls for the engines. By increasing and lowering power, they can slowly influence the plane's vertical axis, and by applying more thrust to one side of the plane, they can influence its yaw very slightly. It's a very hopeless method of control, but it's all they've got. Signs of the effects of hypoxia begin to show to the controllers on the ground, as radio transmissions begin to go unanswered, and despite wanting to turn back to Tokyo's Haneda airport, they still seem to be heading away from Tokyo. The air traffic control suggests the crew try landing at Nagoya, which is just over 70 miles away, but the captain requests Haneda. After over 10 minutes of flying without control, the plane has barely descended 2,000 feet, 
not enough for the passengers to safely breathe. To help try and slow the plane and create a little bit of drag, the crew try lowering the landing gear. In the next few minutes, the stricken plane would make a 360 degree turn to the right. They have now begun a substantial descent. In an effort to help, a navigator stationed at the US Air Force Base at Yokota radios in on frequency. The US Air Force has also been monitoring the current situation and has been preparing a search and rescue team. For well over 20 minutes, the crew has been battling without control of their plane, and with their descent, a new problem emerges. Japan Airlines Flight 123 is now heading north towards the mountainous region northwest of Tokyo. Japan Airlines Flight 123 crashed into the mountainous region northwest of Tokyo at 6.56 in the evening. The rightmost engine had struck the top of a ridge before the rest of the plane crashed on the other side of the valley. It is unknown how many people survived the initial crash of the plane. The US Air Force had had their search and rescue team ready to go, but was told to stand down by the Japanese authorities, who were delayed in getting to the crash site until the following morning. What is rather disturbing is the fact that locals to the area reported hearing sounds of survivors calling out for help only getting quieter and quieter throughout the night. In the end, only four people survived the crash, including two members of the cabin crew. The crash of this plane killed 520 people, making it the single deadliest aviation incident involving a single plane. This is where I should end things, however, in 2002, in near-identical circumstances, another 747 was involved in a structural failure due to the botching of a repair job on a tail strike. The year is 1980, and a China Airlines 747 is making a trip between Stockholm and Taipei. This is the second leg of the trip, having made a stopover in Jeddah, and coming in for an approach on their next stopover in Hong Kong. This 747 is Boeing's brand new 200 model. At the time, the only airport in Hong Kong was much different to the one that is in use today. Located right in the middle of the Hong Kong area, Hong Kong's old Kai Tak Airport is one of the most crowded airports in the world. There isn't much space out here. The terrain around the city makes it hard for air traffic to navigate to the airport. Kai Tak Airport was made famous for its distinctive approach methods for runway 13 as a solution for the difficult terrain. Aircraft arriving onto this runway had to make an approach that involved a steep right-hand turn at low altitude just seconds before touchdown. On the 7th of February 1980, this China Airlines 747 made that approach, but upon landing suffered a tail strike scraping the runway. The repair was carried out and the plane kept flying on as normal for decades. Over 22 years later, on May 25, 2002, the same 747 flying as China Airlines Flight 611 was making a trip between Taipei and Hong Kong. The plane itself has made this route thousands of times in its lifetime. However, just before reaching its cruise altitude, the weakness caused by the tail strike at Kai Tak 22 years ago explodes. Whereas in the case of Japan Airlines Flight 123, where that plane stayed flying for some time after it exploded, China Airlines Flight 611 disintegrated into the sea killing all 225 people 